Our next guest is talking about something that's really dear to my heart, and that is providing the basic needs to children all across the, the world. Um, globally, there are so many people that are dying from lack of water and contaminated water. And Nick Jordan, who is the CEO of wellsoflife.org, is here to talk with us about that. Nick, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, it's a lovely pleasure. Oh, it's wonderful to be able to see somebody who right here in our community in Orange County is making a huge difference globally. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started with Wells of Life? Well, originally I got started uh, as a result of funding some schools. Um, I was based in Laguna Beach. I had a real estate company and all the way back in about 2005, 6 and 7, uh, I had an opportunity to raise funds for schools. In 2008, I had an opportunity to actually visit those schools. And I really had an eye-opening experience when I found out that there were less girls than boys attending school. I very quickly found out that when water was not available, girls had to haul that water every day and were robbed and denied the chance of an education. Mm. Oh my. That's what started Wells of Life, and it was founded right there close to the River Nile in 2008. Mm. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. And now, tell us how it's evolved. Well, like a lot of things, Lauren, it's evolved slowly, but very, very um, strongly. We've grown from a very small volunteer organization to one of Orange County's most determined and most professional organizations. Uh, numbers, they don't always tell the story, but I think it's no harm to tell you that we're working to bring water every single day to almost half a million people in Uganda. So wow. you're strictly in Uganda right now? Yes, we chose yeah. Uganda because I had a four-year history of working with another non-profit organization that built schools. Right. And as a result of the knowledge gained from that organization, we decided to bring water to every single school and church so that that gift was going to break the cycle of poverty. And by the way, um, Uganda has about the same population as California, except oh, wow. almost half that population have no water. That's half unbelievable. Half of the population have to, have to carry the water from They have to carry the water distance. from distances that sometimes are as far as three and four miles mm. that are in dangerous places. Uh, mothers, unfortunately, and their daughters typically are the ones that carry the water. Uh, mm. Water is heavy and five gallons of water weighs about 40 pounds. Mm. And when you see a woman carrying water on her head, it is such a heartbreaking sight knowing that that mother has been robbed of the opportunity to be a mom mm. and her daughter is robbed of the opportunity of an education and so the cycle of poverty continues simply because there's no water mm. and it sounds so simple to us i mean we're so spoiled and we always have been but the truth is without water the children don't go to school they get sick there's no cure right there's so much that can't be done that just, I mean, it sounds so simple to it us, does, doesn't it? It does. Just and run a pipe and bring in the yes, water. Yes, it does. It's just right down there, sometimes yeah. 50 feet underneath where children are standing, begging for water. It's oh. right there. So how do you, do you send in a team? Is it an international group that's doing We have a, a very uh, full complement of skills. We have our own drilling equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually drill our own wells. And it's a very simple process that uh, once was developed by the Chinese. It hasn't changed dramatically. It takes one week to drill a water well that will bring water to a community that has on average 1,000 people. Mm. The cost of a well is $6,000. And so by doing math, I can tell you that $6 brings water to one person for up to 25 years. Oh. That's incredible. So you're, you're, you haven't had a 25 year history with a well yet, but that's the estimated life of the well. Um, and that means that that's as long as it'll have water or that's as long as the technology will actually hold out? Well, it's a good question. Uh, what makes Wells of Life essentially different from a lot of other NGOs is that we teach the local community how to maintain and how to fix their well. Because like everything mechanical, a well will break. Sure. Right. Sadly, there are a lot of broken wells in Africa. And the reason they're broken is because the local people were never taught how, how to actually is. repair this well. Mm. Something as simple as maybe a $5 part can be the difference between that well working 
and it being abandoned. Uh. So we have a, a WASH program, which is, it stands for Water Hygiene and Sanitation. And so we train and teach local communities how they can essentially break that cycle of poverty by understanding hygiene, by training their young men and women how to become well mechanics, pump mechanics. Mm. It's such a powerful uh, gift to give to a, a community to bring them the, the teaching and the training that provides the skills that are necessary. Mm -hmm. We're actually building a training and visitor center just outside of Kampala. We're launching that uh, very shortly. That will be a training area where we can equip local pastors, where we can provide local pastors and link them with the local churches here who all have a desire to serve and have mission programs. We have school trips attending Uganda to see firsthand the difference of a well. This year I'm leading a group called Mater Day High School, who everybody is familiar with. It's a wonderful high school in Santa Ana. They've drilled five wells and funded five wells through our Run for Water, which is wow, an annual event and happening in April next on the 28th of April. So there's so much to tell you in a short mm -hmm. space of time. Uh, the only thing I could say with total conviction is that there's an opportunity for everybody. So. Well, didn't you say earlier that your youngest donor is seven and your oldest donor is 104? Is that right? <laughs> I did indeed. <laughs> we have certainly spanned the full spectrum of age. Yeah, that's so right. So it's possible for uh, $6 to be raised in many different ways. Uh, I'll just deal with the 104 first of all. Uh, Monsignor Anthony McGowan is a wonderful Irish man. He's been a priest for 76 years and he's funded two wells. And he's actually working on his third well right now and he's going to turn 104 in May. Mm. Our youngest donor is a young lady who decided to give up her birthday because she didn't need any more Aww. gifts. Now that's a very special young lady I have to tell you. And she decided that she wanted to get $7 from all of her friends and her mom and dad I'm sure, uncles, aunts, cousins and all that goes with it and raise her own well. And she will. Oh my gosh. Confident. So That's you know, if, if those two people represent Orange County, I know that we have a great opportunity. We just simply need to invite people sure. to come join Wells of Life and essentially change the world in such a simple way. Well, I'm ready to sign up right now. I'm like holding back the tears. <laughs> <laughs> how do I sign up? And how do we get how do we go? That you? is yes. so wonderful. <laughs> what we would love you to do is to come and join our run for water on April twenty eighth. And by walking, I'm sure you'll be running, but by walking <laughs> or running three miles, essentially what you do is you honor that mom who has to walk three miles every day of her oh life and gosh. carry water. And may I just paint a simple little picture. When you run through the finish line, it won't be any ordinary finish line. There'll be a thousand people waiting there with their arms held open wide to thank you for what you've done. Oh. And so by signing up for our Run for Water, which of course is on our website, mm -hmm wellsoflight.org, you'll be able to come and join another thousand people, moms, dads, business people, four or five people that are incredibly inspiring to me that are in wheelchairs, uh, people that just know that their heart is filled with compassion for those in need. I know there are a thousand people here in Laguna Woods that could join me and you and Lauren mm -hmm. on Sunday morning mm -hmm. and realize that you don't have to run to be a hero. You might just have to walk as long as you're willing to stand alongside a mom that needs water, a child that deserves an education, a family that you can lift up out of poverty. That is a good day's work, a good year's work, and it's, it's an incredible way to create a legacy that we can leave behind. It says, we cared. I don't think he could say it any better than that. No, not at all. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us, Nick, and you, can, you will see me there at that race. I'm looking and, uh, forward to it. <laughs> me too. Thank you, and everybody Thank else you. as well. Thank, Thank you, you for the opportunity. Much. We'll be right back.